I was Anna from Fantasy Fox. Thank you and for coming back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. The response from my last video was really overwhelming and I really appreciate everyone who has basically encouraged me to continue on. It's been really nice and really supportive so thank you everyone so far. Today I want to talk about what to pack for LARP. Now I had a lot of ideas as to how I was going to explain this all to you guys because lots of different people come from lots of walks of life. I feel that where I started and where I am now are two very different places and there was definitely an in-between. So not everything will be appropriate for everyone but my hope is that basically it's a printable list that you could like cross through anything you don't need but then add what you do need. So I've named them LARP on a budget, LARP standard and LARP luxury. Um, these all have fairly similar things on but some as you obviously spend more time at LARP and you spend more money at LARP um, and you want to be comfortable and then you kind of fall into the LARP standard and LARP luxury. When I first started I didn't even own a tent. <laughs> I had to borrow a lot of tents and I was rubbish at putting them up. But this video will be split into a couple of sections, LARP on a budget, LARP standard and LARP luxury but in each section there will also be the difference between like out of character or OC and in character IC. I'm going to display just here all the things that I discuss. I might not be able to fit everything on the screen at all the same time which is why I'm hoping to be able to get that tick list so that you're able to access it so you can read it as well. At all events there is a paramedico, event team, helpful people in the field in general who should be able to help you get the things you need or even take you to a supermarket that's nearby. So I'm gonna start on LARP on a budget. Now LARP on a budget for me is almost someone who's coming from university, doesn't have a lot of stuff, is probably traveling by train so we're trying to keep it quite lightweight, kind of as few bags as possible but it's not always possible <laughs> to make that list as short and relevant to lots of people. So there's a couple of things that I would suggest for your out of character section. These things will help you have a comfortable time to start with at LARP even if it's not the most comfortable or the most luxury. Camping is part of LARP in a way in the sense that you can't really get away from it unless you can afford to go to a hotel or a B&B &B nearby if there is one which there isn't always. Okay, so let's get started. So, LARP on a budget, you're out of character or OC. Here are the things that I list. A tent. Now, this tent doesn't have to be amazing. You don't have to be able to stand up in it. It just needs to be a good tent, preferably not a pop-up tent, just because they, they don't really have enough room for you and your stuff, as easy as it might seem because they're quite lightweight. There are some larger pop-up tents which I do recommend but the little diddy ones that tend to not be very good for like keeping the warm in and keeping water out they're not particularly great for your first event or they'll only last you one event and that's not worth even the 20 quid for that pop-up tent. Yeah I recommend investing even in just a small tent even if it's just for yourself. I would always say to go for a two to three man or add an extra man per person who's going to be in the tent. So if there is a two man tent, expect you as one person and your stuff to only be the things that fit in there. If you are two people, maybe get a four man tent. It depends, there are lots of different types. Some of them allow you to stand, some of them don't. If you can get a standing up tent, that's moving on to LARP standard. I'll probably make a video about what tents are best on different budgets relating to the year that I'm doing it. It might be 2020, it might be 2021. Comment down below, just letting me know your thoughts. That'd be great. I do have a funny story about tents because there is never not a funny story when it comes to tents. Everyone usually forgets something when they're camping. It, it's a known thing. Um, but one time I traveled most of the way over the country and the night before I'd packed everything. I'd got help from other half and it was great and I packed everything and it was just gonna be me going because unfortunately he couldn't go. That was sad. <laughs> um, and we have a tent that 
the, the poles didn't always fit in the bag. So the last time we used that tent was well over a year ago, so neither of us could really remember if the tent poles were in it. Anyway, after about four to six hours of driving that day, I get onto the site with my friend and find that my tent poles are not only not in the tent bag, but they're also not in my car at all. And I was gonna have to drive first thing in the morning to go get new poles, which meant that night I had to sleep in someone else's tent. Now, it's quite funny to me now, but at the time it was exhausting. <laughs> I'd done so much driving and all I wanted to do was relax and it was the bank holiday August weekend and it was bloody boiling. <sighs> and loads of things had already gone wrong. So, you know, it happens and it's fine. Things can be rectified. So yeah, make sure that you have your tent poles. <laughs> The next thing I'd suggest is rock pegs. Now I use these hard ground orange 20 pro hard ground tent and awning pegs. I bought these off Amazon. I think I've bought like two packs of them and I think they were about 12 to 15 pounds, maybe a little bit more. They obviously come with this box. They're really, really helpful because a lot of the scout camps or sites that people camp on have a lot of rock or clay that's quite hard to get into. And if you have just your average tent pegs, they tend to bend and break a bit easier. Whereas these last quite a while now. Mine are probably going to be quite muddy, but here we go. This is just what they look like. They've got a little, little hole, etc probably seen a tent peg before in your life but I just find those ones a bit easier. I've also got these ones which I got from Aldi because I was running, I couldn't find my pegs one time so I bought some pile driver pegs, I think they were like seven pounds. They were probably in the middle aisle so they probably don't sell them at the moment or won't for a while. Uh, these are quite good because you basically drill them into the ground and they do the same thing. Oh they are very muddy when I'm opening that. <laughs> a mallet just to get those uh, pesky pegs in. The next thing I'd suggest getting is a sleeping mat or a bed roll. Now you can get a self-inflating one which can be quite comfortable or you can just get the, the foam ones that roll up. They're not necessarily the most comfortable but I'm thinking about when you're on a train and you've got to carry all the things an airbed might be a bit too bulky for something like that. Um, a bed roll is quite bulky but it's it could be quite cheap if you can find it online. I had one for a while, it was about 50 quid and re like normal retail, it was like a hundred odd. It was a really good bargain and like, I, I recommend the, the roll beds for a couple of events if that's what you need to see you through. Nothing worse than having a really bad bed though. It just makes you cranky. Considering you're up all day, your bed is really, really important. So I'd highly recommend even if you're just your first event or your first couple of events, you're only using a sleeping mat, like the foam one I said, that's really, really cheap. That's fine, but it, you might find that it's not very conducive to your sleep, but it's entirely up to you because it's what, what is appropriate for you. The next thing I'd suggest is a sleeping bag. Now this kind of, this kind of goes with the territory. Obviously you're out in a field, in a tent, you must need a sleeping bag. Yes, because being warm at night is big and clever because no matter how warm it is during the day, I assure you at night it is freezing. So you need, you need at least a two to three season sleeping bag. Um, however, you can get away with a one to two season sleeping bag if you get a sleeping bag liner, which can be fairly cheap as well and they fold up really, really small. They usually come with little bags as well. The other thing I would suggest about staying warm in your tent is making sure you have a few blankets, maybe some to put on the floor, underneath you, some to put over you, some to take into your sleeping bag with you, whatever is necessary. I take quite a lot of blankets, I'm a very hot person. Next up is a pillow. Everyone forgets one. It's a sad time. Don't forget your pillow. <laughs> So the next thing on the list is torches. Now this can be just a little handheld ones that are a pound from either Poundland or a supermarket or you can get something well like this. Um, these can be quite bright. Doesn't show very bright but it is quite bright. Um, for your tent or something that you can put on your person that you can use to take yourself back to your tent. I prefer the little mini ones I can't find at the moment unfortunately. 
um, but I'll place a picture somewhere on the screen to help. Or you can go for something that looks a little bit more in character. Uh, this is a little bit weighty and this is incredibly bright. Um, it's really handy to have something that looks in character more than out of character. However, as I said, this is a bit weighty and quite large, whereas you might only want like a couple of handheld ones that will do the job, just make sure you don't shine them in people's faces. Next up is your toiletries, essentially. It's everything you bring to an event that I think is quite relevant. I'm gonna list off some of the ones from the tick list now. So I've got toothbrush, toothpaste, baby wipes, and dry shampoo. This is in place of going in the shower. Now, it's not the nicest thing to be going four days of an event without having a shower. Some people can't even do the, the shorter three-day events without going for a shower, which is totally fine. It's up to everyone. I personally recommend a good baby wipe shower and a, and a bit of dry shampoo just to make your hair look and smell a bit better. It might help you feel cleaner rather than carrying towels and all the toiletries. Deodorant, no one wants a smelly person near them. Make sure you put it on. Sanitary products, any personal med medication you may have. I'm asthmatic, I need to remember to take my inhalers and I've also need antihistamines so don't forget your antihistamines if you are allergic to pollen or dust like me <laughs> because you will not be having a very good time in a forest in a field with all that pollen no matter what time of year it is just bring your antihistamine the next thing i suggest is a hand sanitizer um there can be port loose at events and sometimes the water isn't running so you can't always necessarily wash your hands i know this is a bit of a hot topic at the moment with what's going on in the world but hand sanitizer is something that I always have kept on my person. Of course, you can always go to the main toilets, which do have soap and water. Uh, but sometimes when you're in a bit of a rush, you just want to go to the nearest one. <laughs> uh, the next thing I suggest is sun cream. So you're going to be outside all day for several hours. So make sure you protect your skin, guys, because that's cool. The next thing I suggest is makeup and a mirror. Now this is more like if you're someone who uses makeup for your in character and also your out of character, I would suggest bringing both. If you want to do any type of makeup for your character or whatever, make sure that you bring it with you. Make sure you have a mirror. I actually have quite a nice mirror from Primark, which I paid £14 for. And it's got a, like a ring light on it and it's really helpful for when I'm doing dark and auspicious makeup during 7 to 8 p.m in october now it's very very helpful um to have obviously more than one light so that's what i quite liked but i understand if someone just needs a small mirror with them just something that you can look into so you can do what you need to do a lot of the time there's mirrors in the bathroom but you might have to fight for a space hairbrush and hairbands now obviously if you don't have hair you don't need a hairbrush and you don't need hair pads and you sure as hell don't need dry shampoo next thing on my list is glasses and contacts and contact solution now, if you're someone like me and wears glasses, obviously I'm not wearing them now. Make sure that you bring your glasses in your glasses case and your contacts with your contact solution and any kind of trays you have for your contacts. Don't leave them in whilst you're sleeping. Make sure you take them out. The next section is more about your clothing. So underwear, however many pairs of underwear you're going away, make sure you add one or two extra because you never know. Uh, if it's a cold and wet event and you get soaked through, you're going to want to change. Uh, socks, always bring about 10 times more than you think you need because, again, it could be wet, it could be hot, and you'll probably need to change your socks more often. I highly recommend some sort of thermal sock or at least some sort of walking sock to go in the shoes you're going to be mainly wearing. I also like to bring a set of bed socks for nighttime. Bras, if you wear one, bring a couple, maybe bring a sports bra, depending on what's appropriate for you. So shoes, you want a pair to walk around in when, for when you're going to the event, coming back from the event, and also ones for going to the toilet in. Now that doesn't mean you need three pairs of shoes, you just want a pair that is easy to slip on so you can do those things, but, but also still protect your foot. Next up are walking boots. Now you can buy walking boots from any places quite cheaply, eventually you'll probably want to invest in a pair that will last a bit longer than a year next up is a jacket or a coat if you are going to an event a day early on the thursday night for example uh, you're probably going to need some sort of coat or jacket because it will get inevitably cold so next up is top 
tips. For this I mean something to go under all of your in-character stuff for if it gets a bit cold. I personally have a pair of thermals. I didn't start off with thermals. I did start off with like Primark O brand long sleeved kind of t-shirt or the strappy top equivalent PJs. Uh, PJs are quite important, obviously nighttime. You want to be wearing something different, not something that you've worn and sweated in all day. Next up is gloves. Now I have one pair of fingerless gloves. Let's have a bit I have one pair of fingerless gloves which I absolutely love and they were made for me by a friend. They were crocheted, I thought they were really cool. You can have any type of glove you like, just make sure that it's not brightly coloured, make it appropriate for your character and your kit. Generally speaking, just a black pair of gloves is good. So now we kind of come to the kind of miscellaneous section. First of all, plastic bags. Now I suggest bringing some black sacks. It's gonna rain, so you might get wet kit. Your boots might get really muddy. You've got food in your tent and you need to throw away the rubbish. But plastic bags is number one. It really, really, really helps you make sure that your none of your other belongings that weren't wet and muddy before aren't wet and muddy afterwards. So next up is a portable charger for your phone, for any electronics you decide to bring. The next bit, is batteries. So obviously you've got torches, so you're gonna need batteries. Um, I usually bring a wide selection. Next is your phone and your charger. This is quite simple. Some sites have started providing cable charging points, but not all sites have this option. Next up is food. So if you're going to feed yourself, best to buy kind of snacks even if you're not catering for yourself. Don't just buy sweets and chocolates, buy some of them, but also buy things that will be good for your body whilst you are overexerting it. Drinks. Most, most LARPs these days have some sort of alcohol place that you can get from some sort, some sort of pub and they will be provided for out of character money. However, if you don't want to spend out on a bar, at the event, you could pre-buy some alcohol if you're of legal age, of course. Um, and I would also recommend water and some sort of like squash drink, maybe some fizzy drink. As mentioned before, water. Water is really, really important at events. Even if it's a really grey, really overcast day, you still need to make sure that you're hydrated. If you if you can only bring one big bottle, a lot of the time, a lot of the sites have drinkable water somewhere available on sites. So you can refill a bottle. Uh, next is cash. So if you're not self catering and you're going to caterers, you're going to need some cash to pay for food. You might want to buy a meal tickets. These can be available usually at the events. Um, however, if you want to go to different caterers, if there are more caterers available, then I would suggest having some cash for that. You could be in the field and you might want to buy some new kit, you might want to buy some weapons. It's best to have cash because signal on sites are not always capable of doing credit card payments. Um, it is possible, it's just the signal can be really bad and it can take a really long time much better to have cash. ID if you are a student or someone who can get concessions. Bring your student ID to help you get those concessions. The last thing I'd bring is keys. Keys for your house, keys for your car. Keys are really helpful. <laughs> it's quite self-explanatory some of the things on this list. One of the optional extras I would add into this list is if you are a light sleeper you are in a tent and tents are not soundproof and there are a lot of LARPers who do snore. So if you are a light sleeper, I would highly recommend some sort of um, earplugs and maybe an eye mask if you're also sensitive to the light in the mornings. Um, they're small and can be packed down quite easily. That's all I would really recommend for LARP on a budget in terms of your outer character things. I think that is everything that I was going to talk to you guys about what, what to pack. I will try and leave a link to the tick list in the description below so that you can have access to it so that you're able to print it off or do whatever you want with it. Uh, you're welcome to kind of copy it and put it into your own document so you can adjust it to what your character needs rather than just a generic list. Um, I 
I hope this was really helpful to you guys. Uh, if you did like it, please give my video a big thumbs up. Um, and please subscribe to my channel for more content relating to LARP. Um, I'm hoping to have another video out next week. So apologies that this one has taken so long, but I'm hoping to sort of sort out a either weekly or bi-weekly schedule, uh, which I will try and confirm on my social media, which is at fantasyfox underscore x. Uh, so if you could please give that a follow and then you can find out when the next video is due to happen. So yeah, please like and subscribe and I hope to see you next time. All right.